A stair-step transcolumellar incision with infracartilaginous extensions is used. The transcolumellar incision is marked and continued into the infracartilaginous incisions. The transcolumellar incision is made first. The infracartilaginous incisions are made starting from lateral to medial. The tip skin is elevated initially from the columella to the infra tip and then from lateral to medial over the lower lateral crura. Using a double hook placed in the soft triangle, the dissected pockets are connected. The tip skin is elevated off the perichondrium to expose the tip cartilages and is connected to the dorsal undermining. Dissection is performed with a combination of sharp and spreading techniques. With a periosteal elevator, start 2 mm above the osteocartilaginous junction and elevate the periosteum off the nasal bones. Elevation should be done centrally, only enough to allow modification of the dorsum while lateral soft tissue attachments are preserved. Start at the anterior septal angle and elevate a mucoperichondrial tunnel off the right side of the dorsal septum at its junction with the upper lateral cartilage, and then do the same on the left side. The mucoperiosteum is also elevated from the deep surface of the nasal bones medially and from the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid to expose the dorsal septum requiring modification. This will preserve the mucosa of the internal valves. Through the tunnels, separate the upper lateral cartilage from the septum with a number 15 blade. Under direct visualization, the mucoperichondrium is elevated further from the dorsal septal edge bilaterally. Angled septal scissors are used to reduce the dorsal septum to its desired height. A rasp is used to lower the bony dorsum. The rasping is performed using oblique strokes. During rasping, the cephalic ends of the upper lateral cartilages beneath the bony dorsum are pushed posteriorly to avoid resection. The nasal skin is redraped intermittently to assess the contour of the dorsum by palpation. Using a nasal speculum, the anterior portion of the inferior turbinate is identified. Using a number 15 blade, the mucosa overlying the inferior turbinate is incised along its inferior border for 5 mm only. Using a caudal elevator, the mucosa is carefully elevated off the underlying bone posteriorly. The bony portion of the anterior inferior turbinate is then microfractured from posterior to anterior with a caudal elevator. At this point, the remaining turbinate is outfractured. Starting at the anterior septal angle, a number 15 blade is used to score through the perichondrium bilaterally. A caudal elevator is used to elevate the submucoperichondrial pockets superiorly and posteriorly first, and then toward the floor of the nose at the junction of the septum with the maxillary crest. This dissection is extended posteriorly along the crest. The mucoperichondrium is elevated off the rest of the nasal septum and the perpendicular plate. Using a number 15 blade and starting at the perpendicular plate, the septal cartilage is in size 15 mm posterior and parallel to the dorsal septal edge down to within 15 mm of the caudal septum. At the caudal edge of this incision, an incision is made parallel to the caudal septum, leaving a 15 mm caudal strut down to the maxillary crest. The posterior septal cartilage is disarticulated from the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the maxillary crest using an elevator. The septal cartilage should now be free to harvest while preserving the anterior septal L strut. It must be completely detached and mobile to prevent fracture of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid.
The remainder of the posterior septum can be microfractured using a caudal elevator and repositioned to the midline. If there is deviation of the posterior bony septum, the deviated bony septum can be carefully removed using Takahashi forceps. Skin hooks are used to retract the medial crura laterally. Soft tissue is undermined off the crura and the caudal septum is exposed. Caudal septal deviation is corrected by release of the caudal septum from the anterior nasal spine and maxillary crest. The vertical excess is excised and the caudal L strut is repositioned to the midline using sutures placed through the caudal septum into the periosteum of the contralateral anterior nasal spine. After component dorsal hump reduction, the dorsal edges of the upper lateral cartilages may need to be trimmed. Upper lateral cartilage tension spanning sutures are performed to reconstitute the mid vault. These sutures travel from the dorsal edges of the upper lateral cartilages to the dorsal edge of the septum. Reduction of the dorsal septum may decrease the angle between the septum and the upper lateral cartilages. Reconstruction of the internal nasal valve is accomplished using autogenous spreader grafts. A 25 by 3 millimeter piece of the plastic is placed between the mucoperichondrium of the upper lateral cartilage and the septum. Through and through 5O mattress sutures are placed from the graft into the septum, firmly securing it into position. Both the airway and dorsal aesthetic lines are improved by the use of these grafts. An auto spreader flap is used to adjust the height of the upper lateral cartilages while simultaneously preserving function of the internal nasal valve. Using a number 15 blade, the superficial surface of the dorsal edge of the upper lateral cartilage is scored. The cartilage flap is rotated medially and secured to the septum with two or three sutures. This maintains dorsal height by using the normally resected part of the upper lateral cartilage. An overly dynamic depressor septi nasi muscle may decrease tip projection and lead to posterior and caudal tip rotation. The depressor septi nasi muscle may be modified by transnasal release or transoral dissection and transposition. Dissection in the columella is continued between the medial crural foot plates. The depressor septi nasi muscle attachments to the medial crural foot plates are identified and released. Traction on the lower lateral cartilages will no longer be transmitted to the upper lip. A cephalic trim is indicated when the domes are bulbous or boxy. The width of the right lateral cruce is measured and left 5 to 6 millimeters to create dome definition. Using a number 15 blade, the cephalic portion of the lower lateral cartilage is excised starting at the middle cruce and continuing along the lateral cruce. Cartilage may be saved for grafting when indicated. An alternative technique to create dome definition while correcting a concave lateral cruce or improve its strength is the lower lateral crural turnover flap. The left lateral cruce has been marked leaving a width of 5 to 6 millimeters. The cephalic edge of the lower lateral cruce is dissected from the vestibular skin. 2 millimeter full thickness cuts are made at the medial and lateral margins and the remainder of the deep surface is scored using a number 15 blade. The flap is rotated anteriorly and over the remaining lower lateral cartilage. Through and through horizontal mattress sutures are used to secure the flap in the correct position. A Collymeller strut graft is fashioned from the plastic and trimmed to measure approximately 25 by 3 millimeters. Dissection is performed between the medial crura toward the anterior nasal spine, leaving a soft tissue pad between the base of the pocket and the nasal spine. 
The columellar strut graft is then placed in the pocket. Double hooks are used to pull the tip defining points of the lower lateral crura upwards to help set the position of the columellar strut between the feet of the medial crura and stabilize the strut for suturing. A 5 0 suture is used to suture the medial crura to the columellar strut graft. Additional superior intercrural sutures are placed to stabilize and unify the tip complex. The most superior suture is placed so that the medial portions of the domes can also be sutured to the columellar strut graft. If needed, the strut is trimmed to its desired shape to alter or refine the infratip lobular area. If indicated, a 5-0 simple suture is placed between the medial walls of the domes and tied to narrow the interdomal distance. A 5-0 horizontal mattress suture is placed from the medial surface of the dome through the lateral surface, staying deep to the vestibular skin. It is passed back from lateral to medial. A double surgeon's knot is placed in the suture and tightened until the desired angulation of the dome is achieved. A second and third knot are tied. One suture is cut short and the other left approximately one inch in length. The same procedure is performed on the opposite side, leaving one end of the suture long. The long end is tied to the remaining suture end on the opposite side. The knot is tightened until the desired distance exists between the tip defining points and is then tied. A shield shaped graft is cut from the plastic so that the top of the graft is approximately eight millimeters in width. The width of the base of the graft is the same as the distance between the caudal margins of the medial crura. The length of the graft is 10 to 12 millimeters. The graft is placed so that it extends 2 to 3 millimeters beyond the tip defining points. The graft is secured in place with 5-0 sutures at the caudal margins of the domes and the medial crura. Usually four sutures are required to stabilize the graft. An 8 by 6 mm onlay tip graft is contoured from the plastic and stabilized with 5-0 sutures to the tip defining points of the dome. Usually four sutures are required to stabilize the graft. The dorsal skin is retracted with an offricked retractor. A medial osteotomy is performed on the right side placing a 7 mm osteotome on the edge of the nasal bone where it meets the dorsal septum, angling it laterally 15 degrees. The osteotomy is performed by lightly tapping the osteotome with a mallet, stopping at the level of the medial canthus. The internal lateral nasal osteotomy is performed on the same side by spreading the nostril with the speculum and perforating the vestibular skin with sharp pointed scissors caudal to the attachment of the inferior turbinate. The scissors go down to the piriform aperture rim and scratch the lateral rim to break through the periosteum. A straight osteotome is used to start the osteotomy. The osteotome is placed on the piriform aperture rim, approximately 3 mm anterior to the desired level of the osteotomy and is angled posteriorly at a 45 degree angle toward the desired level at the junction of the nose with the cheek. The osteotomy is carried up to within one centimeter of the medial canthus where the straight osteotome is replaced by a curved osteotome. It is continued superiorly until tapping of solid bone is heard. The nasal bone is infractured with the osteotome. On the opposite side, a percutaneous perforated lateral nasal osteotomy is accomplished with a sharp 2 mm osteotome placed parallel to the face of the maxilla at the level of the inferior orbital rim. The entry point is approximately 5 mm above the nasal cheek junction. The 2 mm osteotome is inserted beneath the periosteum at this level and swept laterally to preserve the angular vessels. A low to low osteotomy is done with a light double tap using a mallet 
from the piriform aperture to the level of the medial canthus. A superior oblique osteotomy is then performed at a 70 degree angle from the low to low osteotomy. A gentle digital infracture will complete the osteotomy. The vestibular skin is undermined off the undersurface of the tip defining point to its junction with the accessory cartilages. At the junction or just medial to the junction of the lateral cruise to the accessory cartilages, the cartilage is transected. A pocket is undermined on the superficial surface of the accessory cartilage down to the piriform aperture. A 25 by 3 mm strip of the plastic is cut. It is placed as a graft in the pocket on the undersurface of the lateral cruce with the lateral end extending to the piriform aperture. The graft is sutured to the lateral cruce with two or three through and through 5 0 sutures. Alar contour grafts are also used to correct alar pinching or notching. On the left side, a subcutaneous pocket is made along the alar rim below the infracartilaginous incision with a curved sharp scissor. A 20 by 3 mm graft is fashioned from the plastic and placed in the pocket extending from the alar base to lateral cruce. The medial edge of the graft protruding from the pocket is trimmed at an oblique angle. Closure is accomplished by precisely aligning the transcolumellar incision with 6 0 sutures. Care is taken to align the transition point between internal and external nasal skin to avoid notching of the transcolumellar scar. The vestibular skin is reapproximated with 5 0 absorbable sutures. On the right side, marking is started at 1 mm above the alar crease and is extended superiorly to the most lateral point of the alar groove. The medial and lateral points are connected to another line that will resect 3 to 4 mm of alar skin at its widest point. The resection is designed to avoid transecting the nostril rim and maintain the nostril size. Both lines are incised, removing a wedge of soft tissue. The wound is closed with 6 0 sutures using the halving principle, since the incision in the groove is longer than the one on the alar surface. On the left side, the nostril.